Hi, welcome back. You're at Treetop Lodge. We're here in the kitchen and it's time for Connie's Kitchen. I'm Connie and today I'm going to cook. We're kind of, it's still warm, but we're kind of getting towards fall. So I'm going to do, use my crock pot because I love my crock pot and we're going to do a pork dish. Now this is really simple. I just trimmed down the pork a bit. You want to leave a little bit of fat because pork is dry, but that's not going to be a problem in the crock pot. So we're going to get the rest of this cut up and get it started because we're going to brown it. And then we're going to use apples and onions and all sorts of good stuff. And we're just going to pop it in the crock pot and then you'll come back in like three or four hours and it'll be ready. But I think through the magic of Connie's kitchen, we could probably get it ready sooner than that. So I want to get this on the heat, get it browning. I'm going to season it up. Gotta have our seasoning. I'm gonna throw some, throw some over my shoulder. <laughs> Salt, pepper, and some. I'm using powdered garlic today rather than granulated because it seems to cling to the meat a little bit more during the browning process. Now a little bit of olive oil. Get that started. And that's not going to take long at all. We're going to get that browning. Get my towel out of the sink. And. So we'll be able to hear that start sizzling very soon. As it really all we do, we're not cooking it through. We're just going to get it browned so that it'll, it'll then take up all our other flavors. Now I'm going to take my crock pot and while my meat is browning, I'm going to get started on my other items here. It's funny, this time of year, apple season, I always think of my grandmother, uh, my mom's mother, and she was my fearsome Irish grandmother. I don't think she was five feet tall. But believe me, you didn't argue with my grandmother. We called her Ma. Her name was Catherine. And I didn't get to spend an awful lot of time with her growing up because they were in Canada, up in Montreal. But whenever she came to visit, I'd talk her into making me an apple pie. And one of my favorite things was when she trimmed the crust, she'd take the extra crust and fill that with cinnamon and different seasonings and bake that too. I found out she did that in self-defense so we'd have something to nibble on so we wouldn't touch the pie. So. One year I got her good. I got home and the pie was cooling. I cut a single slice out of it, recovered it, and put, put the, just the single slice on the pan. Well, that woman could be mighty loud when she wanted to be, because boy did I get a talking to when she got home until I could finally convince her I hadn't eaten. I hadn't even eaten the piece I'd sliced. So, apples make me think of her. So I'm gonna dice up <coughs> some of these apples don't have to, again, you don't have to worry about a real finesse on the chop because they're going into the crock pot where they're going to cook down nice. It's almost like making an applesauce. By the time it's done, that's the texture. So, this is a Granny Smith apple. You can use anything. I think there's something, I don't know, maybe it's a little more tart about the Granny Smith that I like for this. Try not to get any of the peel in there because that can be kind of tough to chew. So we've got my meat is starting. You can hear it. Remember I said we have to listen to it when it cooks. So we got it started browning here. We have a little flip. All right, now this might sound like an odd combination, but it's not. We're going to add some red onion to our mix in our crock pot. And again, pretty much a rough chop because it's all going to cook down. What you're going to end up with is pretty much a stew consistency. So that's ready to go. Now, an orange. This is actually a mineola. Um, I like to use blood oranges for this because they have so much flavor, but they weren't available. So first, I'm just going to zest it a little bit, get some of that orange flavor going in there. Zesters are great. And just keep the orange moving because you don't want to get too much of the white. You just want to get the orange part of the zest. Now I'm going to juice it. And I just used my bread knife to slice the orange. Oh well. Now at home I have a, one of the old, old, old glass juicers and I really love it. Found that one in an antique store and I'm actually looking to replace it. So if anybody knows of one, let me know because I really like those. Although this is handy because I can do a lot more without having to empty it. So once I get the orange juice in here, then I'm going to add in our pork, do a little bit more seasoning. 
And this really is simple. This is something that you can throw together the night before and turn it on in the morning. It's going to take three or four hours to cook through because pork, you want it to be real tender. I'm going to add a dash of balsamic. And again, some salt and pepper. Even though those are apples, you need the salt and pepper. Don't need any more of the garlic right now. And our meat is just about brown. We don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to let that sit for a bit. I'm going to put in a dash of some sweet white wine just to keep it moist. So the trick with pork is it's really easy to dry it out. Just ask my mother. All right, so while that's doing that, I'm going to put together a simple salad. Um, salad doesn't have to be greens. It doesn't have to be lettuce and all that kind of stuff. I'm taking advantage of more of our wonderful Michigan summer vegetables. I'm going to do some cucumbers. And because our pork dish is a little on the sweet side, I want to do something that's a little more savory. So this is almost like making a coleslaw, but different elements, I suppose. So I got my carrot, I'm going to throw my carrots, my cucumbers in here. And to that, we're just going to add some sliced white onion. Now, if you're working with a big onion like this, and you want to save yourself some time, score it down the center, much like you would with a small white onion, if you're going to dice it. Score it like that, and then when you slice it, your pieces are already salad size. All right, that one was a little bit thick, but you get my point. So we're going to throw some of that in there, break it up. All right, get that off to the side. Now we're just going to zhuzh it around a little bit, and then white vinegar, real simple, a little bit of sugar, and this is going to be our salad. And of course, salt, a little bit of salt, and then a little bit more pepper. Cucumbers really, really like pepper. So we're just going to toss that around. That really is a little big. Now it's kind of like a recipe a lot of people make that involves sour cream. And my house, unless I can hide sour cream completely, my husband won't eat it. If he doesn't know it's there, if he can't see it, he's okay. So I, there's, I try to come up with things that kind of incorporate that without getting into his sour cream area. Okay, now the pork's almost up. And we're going to throw this all into the crock pot. I'm going to turn it on high and bring, it, bring the crock pot up to a nice boil. And then we're just going to let it go. Once it hits, once it's been boiling for maybe 40, 45 minutes, I turn it down to low and just let it sit. So, we're going to add the pork. We get back, we'll throw it all together, and we'll move on to the next thing. So, here I go and do my pork now. Hello, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And together, Dave and I host a program called Minutes by Minute. We discuss what local Oxford and Addison politicians and appointed representatives are doing to make your life happy or miserable by passing laws, ordinances, and regulations that affect you. We believe that within those political decisions is humor. You just have to hunt for it. For example, did you know there's a local ordinance that allows people to shoot off fireworks 24 hours a day, 365 <laughs> days a year? But since they can do it, nobody wants to do it. Catch us Monday through Friday on Charter 191 and ATT Universe 99, scheduled for 7 a.m., 11 a.m., and 10.30 p.m., or go to our webpage, occtv.org, and click on Programs. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Each week, catch us on Minutes by Minute. Don't miss it. All right, here we are in front of American Legion Post 108 in Oxford. Now, every Friday between 12 and 8.30, they serve up some of the best fish in Michigan. Follow me inside. We're going to take a look around the post. All right, here we are now on the hall side of the post where you can get tables for anywhere to 6 to 30 people. And before or after you're done eating, take a walk around and browse through the second largest military museum in the state of Michigan. All right, now we're over on the restaurant side of the post where most of the fun happens, as you can see behind me. They've got darts, pool tables, 50-50 raffles, and any kind of fish you can think of, bait, cod, walleye, combo place, all right here at your beck and golf. All right, 
You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard. Hi, we're back. I knew you'd come back because you want to see how this all turns out. Well, you're at Connie's Kitchen, and we are cooking in the crock pot. Now, we've taken all the meat and all the apples and onions, we threw them in the crock pot, and we're gonna, just going to let that sit for as long as it wants to sit. But by the time I'm ready to serve it, it will be fabulous. Now, we need a little bit of something to go with it, so I'm going to do up some green beans. And I'm all about ease, so I'm going to use the same pan that I browned the pork in. It's already got a little bit of seasoning in it. All I want to do is take the ends off at an angle. And steaming is good, boiling is bad. Throwing them in the saute pan with a little bit of seasoning is the best. They'll cook, but they'll still be crisp and a bright green. And that is much more appealing on a plate than a bowl of boiled bean mush, which is not my idea of a good time. Um, we were talking uh, in the last segment about vinegars and the difference in vinegars. Now, I'm not a chemist, but I will tell you that vinegars are wonderful in cooking. They're very healthy. And there's a lot of different properties. Years ago, I had an herbal and fruit flavored organic vinegar business. And at any given time, I was producing about 40 different flavors. I grew all my own herbs and uh, processed everything myself. And everything had a distinctly different flavor. The vinegar, when it goes up in the big jars for six months or so, mellows out. And I kind of started it not only because I was interested in herbs, but my dad had just discovered he had heart issues and I wanted to find ways to add a lot of flavor to things without adding salt and all that kind of stuff. So I started making the, um, the vinegars. Now today I used the white, which is just a basic astringent vinegar, but that brings out the water and content of the cucumbers and it cuts, brings down the burn a little bit of the onion. Balsamic vinegar, and there's a lot of different kinds, is sweeter, it's still a vinegar, but it's sweeter. And when you use this, especially when you're using it in the crock pot, the astringency of the vinegar recedes and what you're left behind is the sweetness. And something about pork and apple just go together. So to me, it was just all seemed natural to put it all together. So that's what I did. But experiment. Try different things when you go into the store. You've got red wine and your rice vinegars. And it is a super way to add a lot of flavor, as I said, without adding salt or anything else. And then if you bring in fresh herbs and such, it's a lot of fun. Now my water is almost up to a boil here. We are going to cook spätzle. Egg noodles are fine. Spätzle is better. This is German egg pasta. It's a little bit heartier. I use this um, in my soups in the fall, especially in chicken noodle soup. Just it seems to stand up a little bit better. Give you more long lasting. And that's what we're going to have with our, I guess we'll call it pork apple stew. So we're going to get those started. They don't take too long to cook. I brought the water up with a pinch of salt. We're going to let those go. And I'm going to start up my green beans here. So just... Hmm. Here we go. Okay, it's playing with me today. I've had a lot of weird mechanical things the last couple days. A lot of weird moments. So, I'm going to try a different burner. And that is that back one. There we go. I got a burner going. They don't have to go too long. I'm going to drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. And you notice I keep going back to the th same three seasonings today. You do want a flavor profile where you're carrying through the same type of flavors in your whole meal. Otherwise, it's just too jarring if you go to opposite ends of the spectrum. So we're just going to do our salt and pepper, a little bit of the crushed garlic or dried garlic. And that's all set and ready to go. Got to keep our noodles moving, our spätzle. I'm going to check the crock pot and see how it's doing. Ooh, nice and steamy. Looks nice and tender. So that's coming up. Now, there's going to be a lot of flavor going on with, with the pork stew because of the apples and the onions and such. So I'm going to put together a little simpler type of dessert today. And I've got that all set up here. We're not going to do melted ice cream <laughs> and leftover brownie bits. 
Oh, it's something, uh, the little aside here, I was talking about my grandmother. Up here at the lodge, Nancy and I have brought uh, beautiful furnishings, beautiful draperies and towels, and obviously good food. But we've also been able to bring up a lot of our family things, things that we've had forever. Things that unfortunately were packed in boxes. This is a piece that belonged to my grandmother in Canada. It used to have a mate. This is Napoleon, and the mate was Josephine. Josephine's been lost. But uh, this piece is probably over 100 years old. And one of the reasons I'm holding this up is I have Canadian cousins who I talked to last night, and they've been watching, they're watching the show. And so I want them to see that these pieces, these family pieces are out and being enjoyed. And I've got them. So that was, that was one of the favorites. And this is upstairs in the Rose Alcove here at the lodge. So a little nod to my grandmother. I talked to uh, my Canadian cousins. Unfortunately, I haven't seen them in years, and a few of them I have never even met. But because of Facebook, we're now in touch, and we're actually planning a reunion. They're all going to come down and join me here at the lodge, and we'll get to know each other. I don't know if you call it a reunion if you haven't met before, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've got my spetzel going. kind of want to keep an eye on it so that it doesn't have a chance to stick. I've got my green beans sautéing on a low flame. And we're going to put together a simple dessert. As I said, dessert doesn't always have to be ice cream and cake and pie. There's nothing wrong with ice cream and cake and pie. But So I looked in the cupboard and I had bought butter waffles. Don't ask me why. Check the expiration date. They're still good. So that was kind of my starting point. So I'm going to build a little dessert, kind of a tapas dessert, little tastings. I'm going to do that. The whole time I'm listening to what's going on on the stove because I have my green beans going and I don't want them to go over. And um, I always use the right knife for the job. So, so see, we have these wonderful, basically little waffles. They taste a lot like waffle cones. So we're going to start with those. One of my favorite dessert things is cheese. And I especially like aged white cheddar. A wonderful, rich flavor. And it's a little dry, it's not, so it's not sweet. We're going to add sweet in other ways. So I'm going to take down a couple slices of that. Now we have a different kind of apple. This is a Honeycrisp apple, and this is by far my favorite. It's also probably by far one of the most expensive, so I don't use them as much as I would like to. But when I only need to buy one, to create a dessert. That's the one I go for. They're juicy and they're sweet. So I'm going to finish peeling my apple and uh, you go get a sip of cold water, relax, come on back and join me and this will be ready to go. Hello, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. Together, Terry and I host the weekly news Monday through Friday at 12, 6, and 11 p.m. Broadcast on Charter Channel 191 and at and U-verse 99, we only cover news that impacts our local Addison and Oxford area. In other words, by all accounts, news that would normally not receive from any other televised source. But chances are, if it's local, it will be found on Oxford Community Television and OCTV. For the weekly news, I'm Terry Stiles. And I'm Elgin Nichols. Together, we invite you to join Terry and me for our next OCTV weekly news program. Hi, welcome back to Connie's Kitchen at Treetop Lodge. We are ready to put dinner together and put it on the table. So first off, I'm going to drain the spetzel. Get that ready to plate. Doesn't that look great? Now never throw cold water directly into your hot pots. It will melt them, or it will warp them. And these pots, some of these belong to Nancy, some of them belong to my parents. They've been around, they're revereware, they've been around forever because they've been treated right. 
So you want to take really good care of things like that so you can use it for a really long time. Oh, I didn't finish dessert yet. Well, we'll get back to that. Now, earlier, I went out this morning to have my coffee when I got up because I was up here. Beautiful morning. A lot of wildlife. There were turkeys, there were deer, and there were a few other things going on out there, and I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing. But uh, everyone seemed playful and happy, so it wasn't an issue. But up here at the lodge, you're never quite sure what you're going to see, indoors or outdoors. So just expect that if you come up, you're liable to see something around the corner that might surprise you. All right, so I'm going to plate up. I'm going to put some of our spetzel on here. Mmm, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now, for the main event, da, 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 da. I'm going to make that a little bit neater. And here is our wonderful apple pork stew. And again, you should be here because it smells so good. So I'm going to get a good helping of the pork. A good bit of that juice from the bottom, and that ju the juice is just basically the little bit of white wine we used, the balsamic, the orange juice, and then the natural juices from the pork. We're going to plate that up. Doesn't that look good? Mm -hmm -hmm. Hope somebody around here is hungry today. I generally don't have a problem finding someone to eat after I cook, so I'm not worried about that. And now we're going to grab our green beans. Lay those on there and right next to the pork. This is not the right utensil for fishing out green beans, but you know, you make do. And you want to pretty the plates up a little bit. There we go on that. Okay, is that looking good? Now I'm going to slice. Just picked up some uh, olive oil focaccia bread. It's nice to have on hand. We're going to slice some of that up. nice crusty dry bread that's fighting me. So what else is new? Okay, how's that looking? Is that looking good? All right, now we're gonna, I'm gonna put take these to the table and then we will create dessert. How's that look? All right. Now we're going to serve our salad. That can go on the table also. And we'll finish up what we have with dessert here. I'm kind of excited. This Sunday, the 7th, we have our first wine dinner here at the lodge. We have guests coming in that will enjoy a five or five, I think I decided on five appetizer course, and then a seven course dinner, all accompanied by, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> different wines presented by Dean. Rondi, certified sommelier from Oxford Wine and Beverage. And he will be serving the wines and explaining them and pairing them up with the food. And we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great day. So now, along with my waffle and my aged white cheddar, I've got a couple slices of fresh apple. And now, I don't know what I chose. I think this is three berry preserves. We're going to put that right on the plate. All right, like that. And then we can do this. And a little touch that I liked, I know this might sound odd, pink Himalayan sea salt. I'm really not sure the origin of it, although it probably comes from the Himalayas. But it's got, it's got a nice little tang to it. And I love to throw an unexpected bit of salt on sweet and vice versa. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. We have a couple of simple desserts. I'm going to take these over to the table, bring our salad, and we are ready to eat. So there you have it, another simple meal that all they, in the crock pot, of course, it did take a little bit longer, but overall, our cost is probably maybe $12, $14, and we have enough for four people. And the des that's dessert and everything included. Now, up here at the Lodge, this is the kind of meals we serve all the time, and this turned out so well, I think I'm going to prepare this for our free meal program next week, which I'm not sure if we're going to be taping that, but we will at some point.
because that's a wonderful thing to do and it's easy to prepare and a lot of fun and a lot of flavor and uh, we'll do I think we'll do I think we'll recreate this whole meal for them so now I got to experiment on you so that I have a wonderful meal to serve them and something new to add to our lodge menu so hopefully you'll be joining us up here very soon we have wonderful things coming up we have scrapbooking weekends and the wine dinner as I mentioned we have a baby shower coming up so give me a call whatever your event we can probably make it happen right here and we can accommodate well, not huge groups um, dinner is generally re uh, limited to 20 because we don't want people all crowded in while they're trying to eat so we also we book getaway weekends for girls we've got things coming up for the holidays there's so much going on and we're going to be cooking and you're welcome when you're up here to join me in the kitchen because Connie's Kitchen is a fun place to be and I hope you'll agree and I hope week after week you'll come back and you'll hit us up on YouTube and which is this is all new world for me all this is very technological but uh, you can contact me directly at 248-933-4579 you can hit us up on Facebook Treetop Lodge that's all one word dash Oxford and you need to friend request and I'll say yes and we also on Facebook um, email stormy3958 at att.net and very soon we will have a web page and the web page will include all our various events that we have going on, reviews of people that have stayed here, recipes. We will have a link into our, to the program here, information on our catering services. And as soon as that's up, the best way to find out what we're doing until that's up is to go to our Facebook page because I try to keep that updated on a regular basis. And I was told just before we started here today that our first show that is now running on OCTV and YouTube had, I think I was told, 111 hits since last night. So that's good news, and I hope, that, I hope you'll keep watching and keep enjoying. And if you have ideas or recipes, feel free to give me a call or write me a note or whatever. I'd love to hear it. So from Connie's Kitchen here at Treetop Lodge, please come back and join us again. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard. At Oakland County Parks and Recreation, we value what you value. Family relationships, community connections, good health, environmental stewardship, and economic stability. Oakland County residents and businesses have invested in preserving nearly 7,000 acres of parkland. Since 1966, 13 parks and golf courses have been acquired maintained and improved. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard.